Hello, Science Lab enthusiasts. Today we have a lesson on these plastic, plastic droppers or pipettes. Um, these are disposable, and you, but we usually use them multiple times. And this one we've had for a couple weeks now. Um, if you're working with certain chemicals, um, pay attention to instructions. You might want to have one for each chemical, but I tend to clean these out. Now it's very easy. The way you use these is you put them in the water. Let me see if you can see. Here, we'll do it here. Um, so normally, here, let's do it this way. So you put them in your whatever you're sucking up, and then you are, wait, no, let's go back. You're squeezing the bulb, you're putting it in the solution, and then you're just releasing the bulb. And as you can see, it's filling up. And then when you put it into whatever solution you're gonna do, you wanna make sure you don't put it in the solution. You wanna do it a little bit above and then let it go in, right? This is just an empty jar I'm um, using for, for discarding, right? So again, you squeeze it, put it in the solution, let it suck it up, it's creating a vacuum. And then when you squeeze it again, it will release all that. When I release it again, sucks up air instead of any liquid, right? That's why you don't put it inside because if I accidentally put it in, if let's say I'm putting it into here and I put it here, not only is this chemical mixing here, but also when I release, it'll suck up to more chemicals. So you wanna do it above and you let it go in. Okay, now clean it, right? So we wanna clean it. This is just water, warm water. This is a uh, dish soap and water. And what I usually do is I'll, I take it, I suck up some water. Usually I'll do this, I'll make a cup with water just like this, and then I'll pour it in the sink depending on what chemicals we're using. Most chemicals we're using in Science Lab Lab are like vinegar and baking soda and not that bad. Make sure you read the instructions on disposing of your chemicals. Okay, so we, again. Now another thing I like to do is I'll usually suck it up. I'll put it upside down and I'll let the liquid run in there and kind of get around just a little bit to get all the vinegar out or whatever's in there, put in there. Right, so after the water bath, I do the soap bath. <laughs> like that. I'll sometimes do a couple of these just because you basically want that water moving around, you want that soapy water moving around. There you go, once we're done with that, Go back to the water, same thing. Now we're just trying to get the soap out. So we're running the soap around like that. I'll do this three or four times, All right? Again, if you, eventually you can get multiples of these uh, and just keep track of what chemicals you put in it. Sometimes I'll write on here, I'll put the name of the chemical or I'll put acid or base, depending on what the experiment is, just so that I can keep track and don't mix. But if I have to clean it out, I'll do it like this. Let me get a little more in here. You can see there's soap. To me, the hardest part is getting that soap out, which is probably good, because then it makes sure. So can't get that, there we go. Sometimes you gotta mess with it to get that water, give it different angles. Okay, again, these are more for kids of kids science projects. If you're doing something more serious, more serious chemicals, you're gonna to wanna to get just a separate pipette. And you might even wanna get a more higher quality, uh, maybe a glass pipette where you can take off the end. But um, these work good for what we do, and then we can always upgrade as we go. Hope you found that helpful. Please subscribe, check out our other videos, and we will see you, today's Friday, so we will see you next week on Science Lab Lab Lab.